it's time we look at three of the currently most popular lean rackets, the Axe Force 80, the ultra futuristic looking Aeronaut 9000C, and the current racket of choice for singles players, John and Christie and Srikanth Kidambi, the Tectonic 9. Please also subscribe to my Instagram and Facebook page accounts, link in the description below. So you guys have been asking for it for ages and after tons of challenges in getting them, this is my first time reviewing lean rackets and what pops out to me is that they have a completely different design philosophy to other big brands such as Yonex and Victor. I think leaning has done really well in terms of attention to detail. All three rackets carry grommets which have the leaning logo imprinted on them even on the square cubic locking grommets on the Tectonic 9 and the Aeronaut 9000C. I thought that was a super cool and a very nice touch. All the grommets look very, very high quality as well. The rackets have a lot of very futuristic flashes and angled straight lines. Also with lots of holographic foil as well as incredibly my personal favorite, matte paint all over the whole racket. Matte rackets just look so, so classy. List down in the comment section below what your next racket you want me to compare with these leaning badminton rackets. The naming convention of leaning rackets is very different to the ones of Yonex. So for example, leaning rackets have alphabets behind their model numbers, such as the Aeronaut 9000C that I have here. They also have other alphabets behind it as well. For example, the 9000D, the 9000I, and a plain old 9000. Leaning says the D models are the speed variant of the racket model. The C models are the power variant the B represents a balanced variant. And finally, the I models are the light variant, which typically comes in around 5U weight classes. The X-Force 80 is the latest series by Leaning and was used by the 2016 Rio Olympic champion Chen Long at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics a few months ago. The X-Force 80 has an incredibly clean looking minimalist design with little dots around the racket frames, which are tactile and slightly raised, so you can actually feel them when you run your fingers through around the frame. The pink really pops from the thin and fast looking frame I especially like how the copper holographic foil looks on top of the black matte main color of the racket as well. It also has a box type frame, but there is something unique with its top half recessed frame profile, which I'll get to a little later on. As an added note, the Axe Force 80 racket that I'm testing today is the 4U version weight class. Although all official leaning publications says it has a 6.6 millimeter shaft and it's also printed on the racket itself as well, I measured it with my usual digital caliper and it came back with 6.8 millimeters. So we're not too far away. If we quickly take a look at the visuals of the Tectonic 9, again in 4U, the Tectonic 9 is almost a complete opposite in terms of color schemes compared to the X-Force 80, with lots of white sections complemented with a very cool looking faded yellow, blue, green holographic foil, which makes up the signature Tectonic 9 wording and logo on the racket. The Tectonic 9 doesn't have the tactile dots and has gone back to the usual traditional racket design using normal decals, but it does have one special feature on its frame. The overall thickness of the frame is reduced around the four, five o'clock and seven, eight o'clock sections of the frame, coinciding where the Tectonic 9 wording is located. The frame thickness goes down from a consistent 11.1 millimeters down to 9.7. So quite a significant reduction, which is surely designed to aid frame flexing for better power transfer and angle production. Another unique visual thing for the Tectonic 9 would be the location of the square cubic locking grommets around the 12 o'clock region. The recessed frame profile narrowed around that area, providing a better fit for the square grommets. I'm not sure where I'll be able to find these square grommets if I need any replacements, but they certainly look high quality and well made. Again, the racket has a 6.6 millimeter shaft printed, but when measured, I came back with a 6.9 millimeters. So again, we're not too far away, but I was hoping for something closer to 6.6. .6. We finally get cracking with the super advanced looking spaceship that is the Aeronaut 9000C. You can't miss this racket, and to be honest, it does look absolutely amazing. We all know that Yuta Watanabe and Ong Yu Sin plays with this model. I've seen a ton of photos and videos of this racket before, but the real thing looks better. Way, way better. This super bright orange red color scheme just screams, I'm an absolute rocket ship. Come look at me. The most unique thing that I found on the 9000C is the four holes or gaps on the frame at around the four to eight o'clock location. It is actually quite cool to be able to see through the frame and see the grommets on the inside 
through the frame. I've never seen a racket designed with four holes in them, which looks like it's designed to reduce drag and speed up the racket as much as possible. All Aeronaut rackets from Leaning have these four holes on the frame. Other visible features are the cubit locking grommets, which are used in all sections of all the recessed frame profiles on the top half of the racket frame. So instead of appearing only at 12 o'clock position, like the Tectonic 9, the Aeronaut 9000C has all of them from 9 to 3 o'clock position. The Aeronaut 9000C also features the tactile feeling printing again on the shaft with all the letters and numbers having a tactile feel. Very cool, and oh, the Aeronaut 9000C that I have here is a 3U model. In terms of stringing, all three rackets were very easy and solid to string with, and I strung them with Yonex's BG66 Ultimax for consistency in my testings. No issues with any grommets or frame whatsoever. Very good. One thing that I do have to say is that the original grips on the racket after taking off the plastic seals were quite poor and slippery. With the production quality on the racket itself, as well as the price of these rackets, you wouldn't expect that. In terms of play, I found the Axe Force 80 to be extremely lively and very responsive. Too responsive, in fact. Um, it reminded me a lot of the Yonex's Astrox 88S Pro, but with a bit more whip and slightly more boxy feel to it, whereas the 88S Pro had more of a smooth hitting feeling. Perhaps the x Force 80 can be more accurately represented as a cross between the Astrox 88S Pro and the 77. So certainly in the middle, somewhere there. It certainly is not very head heavy and is fairly whippy. I would put it down as medium flex or something that's even leaning towards the more flexible side of things in terms of feel. You have easy hitting with this racket, easy access to power and is very quick at the same time. However, I did have issues with timing of my shots. I've tested this racket over multiple two to three hour sessions and all came back with the same conclusion. In the first session, I thought I was having a bad day and just couldn't hit the shuttle, and I needed more time to adjust to the response and flex of the racket. After a few more sessions, I realized I was still having the same issues, timing, so I certainly want you guys, if you're someone who's not used to slightly whippier or medium flexing racket. We've got a very lively, slight rebel hue. Might not listen to everything you say, but it's quick. If we quickly move on to the Tectonic 9, and oh boy, this guy is clearly a head-heavy singles base racket. It immediately screams, Astrox 99 Pro, 100% a direct competitor too, with a lot of very similar qualities. Shots feel very solid, with a lot of hold, which feels like you have a lot of potential power with this racket. Lifts were exceptionally nice and responsive due to its racket face stability and stiffer shaft as well. If you're someone who likes power-based counter-attacking badminton, you'll absolutely love this racket. This explains why Jonathan Christie plays with this, and it felt like this at Tectonic 9 was made exactly for him. Don't get me wrong, it's certainly slower in terms of fast flat exchanges and you'll struggle if you're late to the shuttle as there's a feeling of a lot of weight around the head of the racket. However, in saying that, backhand clears were surprisingly really nice and easy to time. Perhaps that little section where the frame is thinner helps with the timing requirements of the backhand clears. This one certainly falls into the nice singles racket category, the Tectonic 9. We then round up with the Aeronaut 9000C, and this is an extremely consistent racket. The whole racket feels consistently solid all the way from the shaft to the frame, and they complement each other really well. It reminds me a lot of the Astrox 100ZZ from Yonex, but in a more pliable sense, consistent throughout the whole racket. It's just a step down overall stiffness compared to the 100ZZ, which means it's very, very comfortable to play with. It also reminded me as a stiffer version of the old but gold Yonex Sabre 10. That also certainly popped into my mind. It certainly feels good to play with and is very consistent with its shot. Even though this is a 3U model, it didn't feel like there was a significant amount of weight concentrated on its racket frame. It was very evenly spread throughout the whole racket. No wonder Yuta Watanabe loves this racket. I do have to note that the four gaps in the frame didn't really make the racket feel exceptionally fast, it just felt normal. I wouldn't say that this was an exceptionally speedy racket as well, just very steady and consistent. Out of the three, I would say that the Axe Force 80 is certainly the fastest racket, followed by the Aeronaut 9000C and the Tectonic 9 just slightly behind. Power-wise, all three rackets were not far apart from each other, and the spread is actually really close. 
The tectonic line certainly is the top one here, but if you're able to master the timing of the X-Force 80, I think you'd be right up there in terms of power generation. But for me, I really struggled with the X-Force 80, so it comes last on my list with the 9000C being second and the tectonic nine first in terms of power. I also felt that these leaning rackets have a slightly more boxy and a touch more draggy swing feel compared to current top end Yonex Astrox and Neroflare series. I think this is all down to the fully recessed frame profiles of the Yonex rackets and the leaning having a top half recessed frame profile only. And speaking of the top half recessed frame profile, I found that all three of these leaning rackets I'm looking at here have different lengths of the recessed profiles. The Aeronaut 9000C is the only one that's actually truly top half recessed as it starts around the nine and three o'clock section. Next in line was the Tectonic 9 with the recessed profile starting one grommet below the Aeronaut 9000C. And then again with the X-Force 80 going another grommet down compared to the Tectonic 9. This explains why I felt the X-Force 80 was the fastest and smoothest out of the three. I would certainly like to see how all these feel if they have fully recessed frame profiles. So what do you think? Which is your favorite? I'll see you in the next one.